Hello everybody and welcome to uh, day two of our live bushcraft sessions every day at 10 o'clock. So just while people are tuning in and joining in, I'll do a couple of minutes before we get started into the, the bulk of the lesson. Um, so welcome. I'll just do a few shout outs as they come up on my screen. Um, hello, Matthew, Christina from the Gambia, West Africa. You tuned in about 15 minutes ago. I saw you nice and eager. So welcome to you. And let's see. Brian from Baltimore, West Cork. Hello to you. Oh, they're all coming in now. Samuel. Hi, Samuel Corney. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. Sean, Rory and Ellie. All very excited to learn more today. That's great. Uh, good morning from Maria in Scotland. Yes. Hometown. I'm not coming from Scotland today. I'm actually uh, down in Manchester, uh, near Manchester where I live now. But um, yeah, you're making me miss the homeland. Hello from Bristol, Mickey Jimbo. Mickey Jimbo. Hello, J Mickey. Hello from Nottingham, Daisy Wallace. Hello, Samuel. Hi, how are you doing? Ben in Staffordshire. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, hi from the Flins in Limerick. Wow, there's, there's a lot. I'm not sure I'm going to get through all these. I'll try my best. Good morning, Stephen Bell from Bell and Sebastian. All right, Stokes, how are you doing, mate? <laughs> He's up in Scotland. He's a friend of mine. And morning, Steve from East Grinstead. Wow, uh, watching from Scotland. Yes, another one. Morning, F Steve, uh, Steve Freya, age three. Loved yesterday's session with Ed. Yeah, so did I. It was very entertaining and I thought he did an amazing job. And Dan Sherlock, well, hey, how are you? Uh, Hayden and Corey say hello from the lakes. Hello from the lakes. Good morning, Owen, age nine on Dartmoor. Uh, Toby in Swindon. Hello. Mm, Mama Hutter, hello to you. Okay, and Mega Jezza, morning. Right, okay, that's probably enough for now. <laughs> uh, that's probably enough for now. So, before we get started on the lesson, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, now, obviously, the, my lesson today is, is all about uh, using knives and how to carve a tent peg sort of safely. And uh, it's, it's obviously important that I get the key points over to you and make sure everybody's getting the, the right information that they need. So um, I won't do comments. Uh, I won't try and read out comments as I'm doing that. What I'll do is we'll try and have a comment session um, towards the end. But during my lesson, I do have a very capable assistant behind the camera here, Hannah, who's going to be looking at the comments. If there are any questions which are about what I'm doing, or if you've got any bushcraft questions that I can answer in the downtime between me showing you some techniques, then uh, I'll do my best to answer them. And we will have again a set um, shout out session at the very end for five minutes where I'll do as many shout outs as I possibly can, because I know people like to, to hear their name. So again, just want to recap uh, yesterday Ed's session. Um, we, Ed talked me into uh, essentially doing this uh, live every day. He phoned me last week and he said, listen, I think what we should do is do some live skill sessions every day during lockdown for people because we thought we had something to offer, a um, little bit of entertainment and a little bit of learning, bringing a little bit of nature and bushcraft into people's lives at a difficult time. So at first I said, yeah, that's a great idea. And then I realized how much work it was to, um, to set all this up. And you know, behind the scenes here, there's a camera and technology and all kinds of things that I don't really understand. Um, so all I would say is just bear with us um, because I'm much happier with a knife or a piece of wood in my hand than I am looking at a laptop and a camera. However, uh, I'll do my best. So yeah, big well done to Ed yesterday and I hope you all enjoyed it. And we'll be doing uh, these live sessions every day at 10 o'clock. A little bit about me, if you don't know who I am, my name's Stephen Hanton and I have uh, been teaching bushcraft, wilderness skills and survival for, well, probably 15 years professionally, but I've been into this since I was about 15, so over 20 years now. Um, and I carved my first spoon uh, when I was about 15, that's probably the first thing I ever carved. So I've been at this a long time and I just love everything to do with, you know, lighting fires and um, animal tracking, what plants we can eat, how to use our hands to make things which are functional, so all that stuff. And this lesson is specifically about carving. I wanted to introduce us early in the, process, in the uh, lockdown uh, lives that we're doing. I wanted to juice, introduce carving because um, I've, had, I've spent a lot of my time uh, uh, over the last 20 years with a knife in my hand just carving a piece of wood. And it's so enjoyable and you get so much from it. And I thought during these lives we'll do more projects, but I thought we'll start with something nice and simple so we can get all of the... Um, key techniques and safety points over to everyone. So obviously with this um, 
session we're going to be using a knife so safety points are key what i would say to you is these lessons are aimed at younger generations they're aimed at children and uh, it's really important of course that we always have parental supervision when we're doing these things that's absolutely crucial and again if you're not used to supervising your child with a knife then watch this lesson really carefully and uh, use the points to guide your child through it and you'll have no problems whatsoever and um, yeah i mean um, that, that's kind of i will cover points such as using a glove and, and using uh, a first aid kit and that kind of thing as we go through the lesson but that's the main thing just make sure that this is supervised really well a little bit of technical housekeeping yesterday ed's battery died that could happen to me today so if it does bear with us hannah's going to dive in with a new camera battery and within 20 seconds we'll be back online so don't leave us and um yeah let's get down to the lesson so um I did a video on Instagram yesterday. I did two videos actually. One of them was showing you how to select a useful and safe uh, knife for carving. And um, just to cover the key points again, what I've got here is a, is a knife specifically designed for children. Um, first thing is it's got a really good sheath and the knife doesn't fall out. It's nice and positive in there and when i pull the knife out you'll see it doesn't fold it's not a pen knife it's not the kind of thing that locks open because that hinge can be quite unsafe so it's what we call fixed blade knife and it's nice and solid and this one's quite a short blade you can see it's shorter than the width of my palm and uh, it doesn't have a pointy tip and that's one of the ad adaptations for for using with children because that pointy tip um adds quite a bit of um well, not danger, but it adds a little bit of jeopardy when, when children are learning how to use knives. So by removing that, we can still do plenty of good work with this knife. And then the other thing it's got is a little bit more of a handguard, um, which protects young hands when they're kind of levering into pieces of wood. And just to compare it with my sort of everyday carving knife, you'll see it's very similar, um, but it's just a little bit shorter and without that tip. And I've wrapped it with orange tape just because... Um, these things, I don't know why they're ever designed black and green, because if you drop them, you'll never find them. So you can see that. Uh, I'll be able to find that no problem at all. And um, yeah, so that's the first thing. So we've, we've got our knife. Now, people often ask when, when um, working with children or teaching children to use knives, should we be wearing gloves? Now, I don't wear gloves because I've been uh, using my hands to carve uh, things for many, many years. Um, but what I would say is you can use a glove on the hand that supports the piece of wood. So when I'm carving, I'll be carving with my right hand and my left hand's holding the piece of wood. And sometimes it can be advantageous to have a glove on that hand so that um, it's a little bit of extra protection and it gives young hands, which can be a little bit soft and maybe not quite as strong, a little bit of extra help. Now, I'm not going to wear that today, but feel free to use that if it makes you feel any safer. And then the other thing about um, using any kind of knife or any kind of tool is always have a first aid kit handy. Now, this is a little personal first aid kit we keep in the house and key things to keep in there are anything for dealing with small cuts. So things like plasters, antiseptic wipes, cotton swabs for mopping up just a little bit of blood and um, things like lots of dressings and plenty of tape. And uh, that's absolutely crucial. You should never be using a knife or any tool without having a first aid kit nice and handy. So, and I wanted to introduce Clive as well. Uh, so this is Clive, it's my monkey. And I just wanted to uh, say that if you're, a, if you're a parent who thinks when I'm, my child is using a knife, I'm going to look like him, uh, with my hands over my eyes that's not a good place to be <laughs> you won't need to do that and uh, just use the, the points that i show you today and you'll be nice and safe and if you've got any questions we'll answer as many as we possibly can about this process okay let's get down to the lesson so what we're going to try and achieve today is a tent peg now i've got a piece of wood here well this is a finished tent peg that i made yesterday and there's kind of three parts to it it's a very simple project it's got a point on the end it's got a little bevel on the top because we're going to drive that into the ground and then it's got a little um, piece that I've removed here and that's what you would use at an angle to hold the string in place on the tent peg. So it's quite a simple project. Now to start with you need a piece of wood. Again I did an Instagram video on this on how to select a piece of wood um, and it's about 
12 inches long, a foot long, and in my case it's about as thick as my thumb, and that's about 20 millimetres or so. And notice it's nice and straight, and it doesn't have any side branches on it. So it's already um, starting to look like a tent peg. So the first, the first cut that I need to make is this chamfered bevel at the top there. Now if you can, if you can see that, can you see that? It's not working. Click on it. The screen's gone blank. Are we live? Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, push the... Hang on, we're having a technical difficulty. Hang on. The screen's gone blank on here, so I can't see you. Is the camera on? Yeah. So you, can you see... Can, I don't know if anybody can see that. We're, we're having... We're not camera people, so we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. But I hope you can see the end of that, and it's a little chamfered piece. So... <clears throat> what I, uh, to do that, I'm working onto a nice block. Now, we never work with our knife onto rocks or onto anything else, or onto our leg or anything obvious like that. We always work down onto wood. So you can see here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the knife. I'm not going to put my thumb on the back of the blade there because what that does is just encourage a blister to develop and you shouldn't really need to do that. So thumb off the back of the blade and just hold the knife nice and positively. Now I'm going to work onto this block and all I'm going to do is just push down with the knife all the way round the top of that to create a chamfer. And notice my knuckles are hanging over the edge of the block. What you don't want to be doing is carving here because every time you make a cut you'll dink your knuckles into the block and that's not much fun. So knuckles overhanging the block and notice I'm working to the side of my body. What I'm not doing is working in front of my body. And that goes for whether you're sitting down and carving or whether you're standing up and carving. You should always be off to the side and that's because um, there's, a, there's a big vein that runs inside your legs here and we do everything we can to protect that. Um, so we don't want any mishaps there. We don't want to pierce that in any way. So it sounds a bit uh, overdramatic, but that's the reason why we always carve off to the side. So I'm standing up and I can just very gently work my way around the top of the piece of wood. I've got a question about the knife here. Someone says, I've got a pen knife with a rounded end. Can I still use it? Got a pen knife with a rounded end. Well, if it's a pen knife that has a, that, that folds in the middle, generally we wouldn't advise that you use a folding knife for this type of work. Some folding knives are quite good quality and the mechanism um, will take the kind of force and power that you need to use with a knife but in general I would suggest if you want to be really safe um, try to get your hands on a knife just like this. I mean, this knife here we're not in the business of promoting anything on this it's not about telling you brands at this stage but this knife was £8.99 and um, it's specifically designed for purpose and it's nice and safe so if you can stretch to one of these knives that's a really good thing to get your hands on. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, the reason that we chamfer the top of, of this tent pick is because when we drive this into the ground, the wood at the top, if it was just flat like this, the wood at the top would want to fray and mushroom and split all over the place. So what we do is we, we chamfer the top so that when we drive this into the ground, all the force is concentrated in the middle and uh, it means that your tent pick is going to last a lot longer. Now, notice I haven't put the point on yet. That's a good piece of advice for anything you carve never put the point on till the very end because it's much harder to work with a piece of wood um, if you put the point on first so that'll be the last thing I do so that's the top of my peg then what I'm going to do is come about three fingers down from the top and I'm going to take my knife I'm going to stand up again because I want a little bit of weight and a little bit of power into this and I'm going to lay my knife across the piece of wood completely perpendicular to the length of the stick and what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to saw, because knives don't really work like that. You won't be able to saw into a piece of wood. It just doesn't work. So come down a bit, and I'm just going to put a little bit of weight, and I'm going to rock back and forward. I'm just going to rock a little bit into the piece of wood. Now again, notice my knuckles are off the side of the block. don't want to be rocking here, because I'm going to hurt my knuckles. And again, I'm working to the side of my body. I'm not working in front of myself, where I've got this sort of danger area. I'm nice and safe. I'm going to rock into the piece of wood. And what I'm doing is I'm creating something called a stop cut. 
So if you imagine this piece of wood, all the fibers running up and down the piece of wood, I'm cutting them straight across and I'm creating something that's going to stop my knife traveling any further. And what I do there, once I've done that stop cut, I can come a little bit behind that cut and very gently, I can work up to that cut. And because I've cut the fibers across there, that little piece of wood will just pop out. Now, I can then go back. I want to go a little bit deeper. I don't want to go any more than about a third of the way through this stick. So that's only about a tenth. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper. So while you're doing that, we've got a few questions about what type of wood you should use for this project. Okay, so types, types of wood. Now this, this piece of wood here, it's a piece of willow and it's, um, it's green. Now green is just a word that we use to describe a piece of wood which is alive. So I've cut this off a live tree. Now a lot of people will wince when I say that. Um, and what I would advise you to do is watch my Instagram video. Uh, I did it, spent five minutes uh, the other day making a big video explaining why we use green wood, why it's important to use green wood, and also most importantly, how we actually collect that without causing any harm to the tree. So that's really important. And uh, this is willow, um, because willow tends to grow very fast and it's very plentiful. So what happens with willow sometimes is the tree will fall over and it'll send lots of very straight shoots up. And uh, I had no trouble at all collecting plenty of those. Um, so I'm not doing any harm to that tree because there was plenty of it and I did it properly. But you could use birch, you could use hazel. Hazel's another really good one because it will grow nice and straight without any side branches. And in this general rule, we try to avoid any trees which are um, sort of uh, um, rare or not as common. Go to an area where there's plenty of one type of tree and uh, by taking a little bit properly, you'll have no problems. Hope that answers yeah. your question. So anyway, I'll go, go a little bit deeper. Again, I can rock in. Now, that's about a third of the way into the stick. I don't want to go any more than that because I don't want to weaken it because I'm going to hammer this in the ground and I don't want that to be weak. So that's the second cut that I make. And then the third cut is to put the point on the end. And again, to make it nice and safe, I'm going to work onto the block. I could work up here into space and that would be absolutely fine. If you don't have a nice chopping block, Are we good again? Back. We're back. Hi, sorry about that. That's exactly what happened to Edge yesterday. Put it back on. And the, um, the battery uh, ran out there, so we did a quick change. Are we there? Okay, we're back. Thanks for staying, <laughs> staying with us. Again, technology not my strong point, but we muddled through. Um, so there we are. So where was I? Um, yes, I could work. I'm working onto a block. Now, not everybody will, as I said, will have this kind of block and this kind of setup where it's all, all easy to work onto here. So you can work um, without a block using your knife in exactly the same way. And I can just whittle the end to a point. Now notice again, really important, I'm off to the side of the side of my body. So the side of, side of my body, which the knife is in, the hand, um, so I'm right-handed, knife's in the right hand, I'm working to the right-hand side of my body. And that means that every cut I make is nice and out to space. What I see beginners do sometimes is they get the idea of working to the side of the body, but they cross over and work kind of out in this area. It's much easier and safer to work off to the same side of the body as the hand which the knife is in. We have quite a few questions from people asking um, when would you start carving with children? For example, um, Lois Dolan, his boy is four, and yep. he goes to an outdoor nursery and he's been outside. So would you recommend using a knife for the four-year-old? Okay, great. First of all, glad he's used to being outside and glad he loves it. Um, yes, four-year-old. My son is four and um, we, he's been chopping vegetables uh, in our kitchen with a fairly blunt, small, child-friendly knife for about a year. So we tried to introduce him to that early um, and he's 
pretty confident. We don't worry too much about him in the kitchen now. We don't keep one eye on him like we used to because um, he's developed the fine motor skills and the coordination to do it with no trouble. But I probably wouldn't give him one of these um, yet. He's four and um, I think it's a little bit early. He's, he's very enthusiastic and I just think, uh, I think a, another year or two before we can we can safely give him a knife like this because it's it's quite sharp it's not like a dull kitchen knife um, and it requires quite specific training so my general advice and all children are different would be about seven years of age i think is a good safe age to start thinking about um, introducing a child to whittling a piece of wood with nice supervision if it's a very very controlled environment and the child is really advanced then um, then by all means make your own discretion but seven's a good general guide I think so like I was saying I can work off to the side of my body nice and safe but again if you've got the luxury of a piece of wood or a nice block and notice I've set this block up as high as my knee which is a good nice height for working onto I can work down and all I need to do is put my point on that piece of wood and that there is the finished tent peg now, some people might be thinking, uh, you didn't remove the bark. And uh, the reason I didn't remove the bark is because if you're teaching children how to use a knife, sometimes on some species of trees, not all, if you remove the bark, the wood can be very slidey and very slimy. And I think if you're learning how to carve, much better to keep the bark on and as a nice solid grip. I could remove the bark really easily and children will love doing this. There's something about removing bark. Uh, which just seems really fun because it's nice and easy and you see results really quite quickly. And if I remove the bark of this piece of wood, it's going to make the wood dry much quicker, um, which might be useful because a tent peg like this, once it's dry, will, um, should be useful for you know, camping out in your garden for, well, years to come. So, um, William, sorry to interrupt, we've got a fun question from Viv. Steve, what is your most favourite and most proud wood project you have made? Uh, my f mm, well, two things. I think my favourite thing to carve is a uh, canoe paddle, I think, because it's quite a difficult project. So I'm probably, that's probably my favourite thing to carve. Um, it's quite tricky and there's a lot of angles and there's a lot of uh, profiles you have to consider and it's got to be nice and straight and it's got to be just perfect. Um, so probably a paddle. Uh, probably my most proud thing, uh, uh, thing I'm most proud of carving is probably, probably a bow, I would say. Um, so making, making bows uh, is a quite a uh, uh, favourite pastime of mine uh, and making a bow is a really tricky thing to carve because um, you need to have a really good understanding of how to use tools so I'm probably most proud of some of the bows I've made and actually on Thursday if you join me and this is a harmless plug I didn't mean to uh, <laughs> run into that so easily but um, on Thursday I'll be doing how to make a bow now that's obviously a, a child friendly, friendly simple bow you can make in half an hour um, but I will show you some of my bows that I've taken uh, two or three days to make so really um, you know, long bows made from you and things like that, which I'm very proud of. So I'll show you those on Thursday. Uh, yeah, so that's that's this tent peg essentially finished. Very simple. And uh, quite a few questions on. Um, can make another one. Okay, so um, where to get hold of a children's knife? What I'll do is at, at, um, on our Instagram channel, probably uh, I'll put a little video or I'll put a little link to where you can get this kind of knife. And we were not really in the business of promoting anything. That's not really what this is about, but um, I do realize that this is a very good piece of kit that some people might want to get hands on. So I'll, I'll put a link to where you can buy this kind of knife. And like I say, this was eight pounds 99, um, I think delivered to the door. So it's not hugely expensive. Any more questions? Yep. Holly is, Holly's a lovely wood. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's got a very white grain, very clean grain, and it is a really nice grain. It's, it can be a little bit hard, um, which will make it great. It'll make a very long lasting project. But for new people, people who are big, uh, new to carving, carving holly can be a little bit tricky. Also, it can be quite difficult to find holly in nice straight 
sections like this. But by all means, um, if you can get your hands on holly, it will work perfectly well. And it is a very beautiful wood. It's a very light coloured wood. Victoria Tate is asking, do you have any recommendations for books or projects to whittle? Uh, recommendations for books. Yes, uh, plenty of recommendations. Again, why don't I just put a link up after the end of this. I'll, um, we'll, I'll do almost show notes where I'll write a list of things. I can put your link to the knives. I can put your link to several books. And uh, there are even some online videos I think I can, I can point you to um, that will show you some good carving projects. But what I would tend to do um, when teaching bushcraft, you know, f begin good beginner's projects are things like a tent peg, um, things like a butter knife. Um, which again is a really simple project. Maybe we could do that in a couple of weeks time on this very session and, and we'll advance the carving as we go. Um, and spoons. Spoons is a really good one. Sp carving a spoon is a classic bushcrafters project and the reason for that is A, you get a very functional object which is great to um, eat with and use around the campfire and B, to be able to carve a spoon you have to master most of the techniques safely and effectively um, that you can that you, that you need to know with a knife and that's mainly the main reason we carve spoons so maybe um a couple of weeks from now we'll we could attempt a spoon but it takes a little bit longer than uh, something like a tent peg okay how about a couple of last questions and then we'll do some shout outs a couple of last questions and then uh, some shout outs yeah okay so mickey jimbo do you sharpen your knife or just buy a new one oh always sharpen your knife yeah yeah no i don't buy a new one no nope, absolutely not um and sharpening a knife is, is something that is uh, something, if you're going to get into carving, you'll have to learn how to do. This knife here, I could probably, um, it's nice and sharp, I could probably use that all day on something soft like green willow. And by the end of the day, I'd be wanting to think about sharpening it. And that is a different skill. And maybe, um, maybe we'll be able to do some sort of sharpening video or some sort of uh, lesson on how to do that. Because actually, it is an important skill. And yes, you'll need to learn how to sharpen your knife. Question from Viv. Have you ever done survival in the wilderness like Ed? Um, <laughs> yes, I've done survival in the wilderness like Ed. Um, I've never done anything quite as extreme as Ed. I certainly haven't spent as much time on my own. Um, but yeah, I've done various uh, wilderness trips where I was relying on my own skills. I mean, when I was um, when I was 17, I used my first student loan payment to travel to Alaska and uh, spent six weeks hiking and fishing and walking around Alaska on my own, um, much to the dismay of my mother. Uh, and I was very self-reliant and I made a lot of mistakes and uh, I learned a lot along the way. So yeah, I've done various um, survival challenges over the years where I've spent a week living with, you know, only a knife, a cooking pot and some snare wire. Uh, so yeah, done various things, but nothing quite as extreme as Ed. Should we do some shout outs? I'm just going to finish this tent peg. So there's two, I've got two now. Okay, we'll just end with a few shout outs. Let me see how I can do. Well, sharpening tools video would be awesome. Uh, Whittling in the wild is a fun book too. Someone's, uh, this, this is great because people are, um, People are giving their own advice and information on what, what they've used in the past. So that's great. Sharing this information is perfect. Um, please say hi to Sam and Finn, aged eight from Warwickshire. You're very welcome. Uh, any resources to help identify trees? Yes. Uh, I, we've reached a thousand followers on YouTube now, which means we'll be able to use our phone to go out into the woods and do a nature walk. So that's my plan. Um, possibly starting next week we'll get out and do some live nature walks and I'll show you how to identify trees and plants and how to look at animal tracks and all that really exciting stuff. Hi, watching from Scotland, Samuel Corney, you are keen. Uh, do you like swimming? Yes, I love swimming, of course I do. Um, da -da -da. Please give Matthew a shout out in Norwich, seven years old, has been waiting ages for these videos. Hello from Norfolk with my four-year-old daughter, Primrose. Hello to you. Um, hi from Maria and Jim in Yorkshire. Connor from Galway. Sarah and Edith. Great show this morning. Thank you very much. It has not been easy to pull the technology together, but we've done it. Uh, please say hi to Hazley. Uh, Matilda. Four-year-old Matilda. Hello from Amber, Jason and Finlay from Scotland. Learning skills at school, great. Uh, thanks so much for this from Viv. Casper and Forest Hill, Molly and Aidan. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Dan Sherlock, hi to you. You, you. you watch the whole thing then. And I think we're just about there. Please, can you say hello to Edward? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, let's see. Have I missed any? Uh, hang on, my camera assistant is. Oh! <laughs> Adam Stokes. Uh, our chickens are called Hulk, Mighty Eagle, Barley, Toothpaste, and Ian from my mate Adam Stokes. Well, I'm glad you managed to write a message that didn't have any swearing in it, so thanks for that. Uh, okay, I think that's it. I think we've done very well um, before we need another camera battery. So thanks for joining me. Um, up tomorrow is Ed at 10 o'clock. He's going to be showing you how to make a really neat little survival trick. Um, he's going to show you how to make a compass with next to, uh, with next to no ingredients. So tune in to see him tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And thank you very much uh, for tuning in and for being very kind to me. So thanks a lot. And my mic.